KTSM presents The Ken Pittman Show Streaming live on WBSM.com And the WBSM app Call 508-996-0500 Now, Ken Pittman morning out there, but not in this room. Brian, you must have you, had you a... You're wearing shorts. You must have had a heated discussion. I am <laughs> glad I wore shorts. I wore shorts because I, I just needed to get out of the house and get here on time. Um, Why does but, he always do But you that? come in the studio, I don't know. it's like 106 <laughs> degrees. Yeah, it is pretty warm in here. And uh, so you must have had some heated discussions. Yes, as I we said. did. Yeah, I didn't want that to get lost because <laughs> of... Um, uh, anyway, this is the Ken Pittman Show. Glad you could join us. A uh, lot, lot going on today. Um, we have uh, all the... All the college college kids having fun out there and on the campuses and you know doing some having social fun? events, uh, condemning Israel in the United States. And you, you, you know, I, I'm wondering a couple of things as I as I watch this footage from Northeastern breaking news, which happened a few hours ago. When I see them in mask, are, do you think that they are protecting themselves from COVID, or do you think they're trying to hide identity. their face identity? Uh, well, that, what good is that going to do when they go to jail? Well, when they come out of jail, they're going to be looking for jobs, and uh, they're going to be denied. Uh, if Why? Well, some of these corporations are run by Jewish Americans. Well, It'd be well, tough but, to sell yeah, that one. Yeah, but I get. Well, I, my guess is you've got plenty of Jewish Americans that are in favor of what they're doing, as opposed to opposed to what they're doing, well, because a lot of Jewish Americans are organizing these events. Where were they on October sixth? Probably at school. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't celebrating what happened on October seventh. They probably weren't. Right. But you know, crazy. These what are... happened on October seventh is different than what has been going on since October eighth. Yeah, they've been celebrating ever since on the college campus. No, I don't think they've been celebrating. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No. They, where were they on October sixth? Probably studying. Yeah, I bet. That, I bet you're right. So, um, Emerson yes. students, yeah, uh, to show their unhappiness with what happened uh, in Gaza following the October 7th massacre. Uh, they broke the Norman Lear statue at Emerson College. What? What did he do? <laughs> Norman Lear? Uh, uh, not only that, he died just a little while ago. Yeah, December. Well, I, I got to bring, bring he, this up because the statue was broken, but we don't necessarily know that it was students that broke it. We know that it was people that were protesting that broke it. And I think that... We know that's, most that's of them huge. are students there. Possible it well, wasn't we, a we, student. You're yeah, right. You know, I, I think, at least from what I'm hearing, Ken, I'm, I'm not there, okay? But what you I'm hearing from is. these students right. is that when they have decided to throw these protests, they have set some ground rules. Now, is everybody adhering to the ground rules? Maybe not. But my, my guess is the majority of them are... And I think that you've got some outsiders coming in that are creating some of these problems. I know. I remember one um, one person who did not adhere to the otherwise peaceful march in Charlottesville. I mean, that's not how it was viewed after after he ran over that young lady. Yeah. It was all of them that were bad. They were all racists. Yeah, yeah, right? I, so I how are you. we looking at this any differently? Because nobody's running over folks Yet. here. Yeah, true. Although... <laughs> Uh, the student uh, leader in Colombia said, uh, "Be grateful." He said, "Be the grateful. I'm, I am not murdering Zionists." Yeah, At least, you know, implying you, violence. I'm sorry, it's not well, right. It, yes, that is, and I don't call that being anti-Semitic. I call that being anti-Zionist. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a good line to use. First of all, but you know, a, a lot of this is being 
termed as being anti-Semitic when I think you've got folks that are being anti what Israel is doing right now. How, so, so, so I get a hundred answers for this, and I know you probably have the right idea of what a Zionist is. What, what, what would be your idea of a Zionist? An imperialistic Israeli, or one that believes in what the imperialistic Israeli is doing. What do, when you say imperialistic, when, when you, are we talking about somebody who's fighting to make Israel a, a home for Jews, or are we talking about... Uh, Expansion. Just like we uh, imperialistic, like the United States is in many respects with a lot of other countries. The caliphate tries to expand. Yeah. They, well, they but would. I wouldn't see, see, I wouldn't call a caliphate what the United States is doing. I would call it being aggressive expansionism. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't support every foreign policy of the United States. But I mean, for the most part, um, in modern history, you know, the, trying to push back communism... The, the, the tyranny of communism. I mean, I, I don't. I, I found that to be a noble goal. I didn't think we did it perfectly, um, but the brutality of communism. I mean, you can't be innocent in all these things when you're doing that. Um, prior to that, we were attacked in World War II, and how do we do? How do we um, define who we are as a, as a people? We rebuilt those countries that attacked us, that, that murdered millions with our money. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think any country in the world is perfect, but I'm proud of this country. Well, nothing wrong with being. I'm proud of what it used to stand for. There are a lot of things right now that I'm having some some tough times with. Same, same. But yep. um, there's, I mean, there's nobody's World, dealing World with War, mass World corruption. World War Two was a, a Japanese aggression, and nobody is going to. Excuse me. Most people are not going to blame the United States for the actions that it took until you get to the part about dropping bombs. Well, and then uh, it, the big bombs, but. Then you have these radical left leftist uh, professors in college who are teaching these kids who are on the campuses today about only the terrible things America did, about only the terrible things uh, that are happening to the Palestinians when the Israelis respond to what's happening. I mean, they, they're getting one side. 19 out of 20 of these people are nothing but paid parents. I mean, we, we already know George Soros is funneling. I'm sorry, be, be specific. Who's the paid parent? Uh, most of these agitators couldn't answer a quiz about what's going on in Israel and Gaza. They just couldn't. They're just there because they're being paid to or they just feel they want to be part of something. Um, in my mind, most of them look like uh, Gary Larson far side characters. Um, so you got me because I don't know what a Gary Larson far side character looks oh, like. Oh, you're missing out, man. Gar no, no. No, the far side. There was a single, single, uh, pan single panel uh, cartoons um, that were found in newspapers uh, every day for, for many, many years throughout the... I guess 70s, 80s, 90s, and um, maybe the early 2000s, but funny, funny stuff. Anyhow, uh, all kidding aside, these um, police departments are finally being the police. Uh, we, we saw these kids talking about, oh, I don't see why they had to knock people to the ground and press their faces against statues. Like, they, they never seen the police that we know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that's, that's really what they do. They're not... I mean, they, they're, they're starting to arrest because they're told to leave. And uh, these kids today don't think there are any consequences. Um, well, I think there, there are consequences. Something that um, our colleague Barry and I talked about yesterday. There are consequences for, for doing certain things. But there's also a way uh, for the students and the police to handle these situations. Yeah. And when I saw yesterday... Um, a Emory University. It's down in Atlanta. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm more of it. Two two female college professors. One definitely at that age, somewhere between fifty five and sixty five, asking the police, "What are you doing?" And she gets manhandled, thrown to the ground, and her arm just contorted right out of its socket. And then handcuffed another cop coming over and and tasing you know there 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 are some problems here, and I think at this particular time i I might be going out on a bad limb here, but I think at this particular time, the protesters have the advantage will they end up winning i don't know, but when you start with one or two protests and it's mushroomed across the country the way that it has. Well, I, I think George Soros, I think the radical left is looking for a Kent State opportunity here. Well, see, this is, thank Mar you for bringing that up. And just, just as a reminder, next Saturday, 
next Saturday. We're going to talk about that because that's the anniversary of Kent State. Mm-hmm. And I think you are, I don't know if George Soros or any of those kind of people, but I can see something like that happening again. More cops have been hurt than protesters so far. You know that? Around the country. I, I don't know that. Yeah. Well, Boston, it's like four to one. Well, I heard four. <laughs> no, well, there were two in Boston, one with the broken leg and yeah. one with the broken arm. Two now. Okay. Okay. I mean, all these arrests, they're resisting arrest because they're just spoiled I, I, ignorance. Are they resisting arrest? Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. Have, have been the videos. Have any been charged with that? Well, a lot of people are being charged, but the problem is, is the prosecutors in Boston and New York are releasing them. They're not, and they're dropping the charges. So, you know, not, I, I was wondering, through. you know, and I'm, I'm listening to you right now. Are the prosecutors dropping them or are, are, are the schools deciding not to press charges? Alvin Bragg has released on his own, on his own authority, has released every one of those uh, protesters that were blocking traffic, resisting arrest. And, all and here's the thing. You're blocking traffic on a bridge or something, right? The police to have San Francisco. The, the police have no right to illegally detain you unless they have probable cause, unless they have the law behind them. Who are these people to illegally detain anybody? Be specific. Well, you're going to stop me on a bridge. Now I can't go back. I can't go forward. You're, you're trapping me. I am now trapped. You're talking about the who, uh, the motorist well, is trapped. Who's going, right who? on the Brooklyn Bridge uh, coming into town? The, the, all uh, the uh, the pro Palestinian protesters stop all traffic. They they arm in arm. They they lock themselves across the road. Now you can't go backwards. The traffic is backed up. It's one way, right? Yeah. So you're stuck. They illegally detained you. That they should be arrested for that. Is it? Can they? I, absolutely. And, and, and I don't know why they haven't brought it up, if I can think of it. But you, the police can't even illegally detain you. Well, the police can't get there, I would think. <laughs> but yeah. but if you can show that these people are illegal, illegally detaining you, all right, I don't want that one arrested, this one arrested. They, they prevented me from, from it, freely moving in this country. It sounds like something that happened in Boston about a decade ago. <clears throat> When, oh, uh, Occupy protest- Wall Street. Yeah. That, I, aren't people just tired of this? This is, I mean, they don't stop now. Occupy Wall Street. I, BLM was probably the most um, explainable cause because something had to change for African Americans in this country. It was obviously there was a disparity in how white uh, citizens were treated and black citizens were treated. And it absolutely need, needed to be addressed by a very patient uh, black community who finally said enough is enough. Uh, and and I, I hope everybody gets the message. I hope I hope we, we adjust and we, we progress, all right? But some of these make no sense. I mean, Occupy Wall Street was just people defecating right on the streets. And just, a, I mean, they didn't even know why they were there. Um, the one time I met Andrew Breitbart. You remember Bre- Breitbart, Breitbart the, News? The uh, Breitbart News? Yeah, I was, I was covering the um, presidential uh, primary up in um, Manchester the year um, Barack Obama won. And I watched Andrew Breitbart. I, I saw him coming from a distance. I said, I think that's, that's Andrew Breitbart. He's coming along back to, toward Radio Row. I happen to be outside in front of the, uh, the hotel. And he's coming from the Occupy Wall Street camp. And, I, and he just walked right up to us and he says, you know, I said, hey, Andy, it's nice to meet you. And, and he just really didn't care about that. He says, you know, I've really learned that I'm more likely to stand up against something than I am for something. I learned that about myself. And he was over there just to debate these people, and none of them knew why they were there or really understood what it was they were doing, but it was cool. They had some weed. Good way to meet chicks. I mean, it was just... Some of these people are only there because they want to belong to something. Um, some of them are passionate about it. And then you have the true believers, there's no doubt about it, but they're, they're really just the leaders. Uh, we had $19 million that, w- that we were able to trace from George Soros to these... To these uh, activists. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you brought up something that I think is very, has my mind spinning right now. Okay. You said, I guess it was Breitbart that actually said it. He doesn't know uh, if he would protest something that he's for or or something that he's against. He learned that he's more likely to stand up for, for something that he's against than he is for. Something that and I th- and I think that, but how how telling is that? I, I think mean, that's I, human I, nature. Is it? Yeah, I, I, mean, think, I think I don't I don't know myself right now. Am I standing up for something that I believe in, or am I standing up against something that I am so vehemently against? Yeah, I think you're more likely to do the, the, the vehemently the against. Yeah. yeah, because hmm. when when something's wrong, when you see some oppression, um, you know, I think that's it hits. Uh, it's a chord. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think it's just human nature. So, so 
these protesters, let's yeah. t- let's look at the really person that's out there wanting to protest. They're out protesting against what's happening in Gaza. Not a, not so much pro Hamas. I mean, I think there are plenty of Palestinians who don't want any more atrocities on either side to happen, and they're they're out to stop it. They want it. They want it to end. They want the you know Israel. Obviously, if Israel wanted to, they could have ended this a long time ago and done this quickly and much more brutally. Um, and so, you know, Hamas understands the psychology of all this. And so they, they're hiding behind the civilians. They're shooting from behind the civilians so that the Israelis will respond and fire toward the civilians that they're hiding behind. That's just how they operate because they know how the left is going to react. They know how the media is going to react. And so it's prolonged because the Israelis got to be very careful. Um, because they're they, not being careful. Uh, well, they're not being careful enough because people die. But in some cases, I think, you know, they're, they're, they're defending their lives when they're, when they're killing. I think the Israelis have shown a lot of restraint in some cases. And then in other cases, I think they, they do a terrible job um, not even bothering to explain how this group of people died. Um, you know, there's, there's, been, there's, been, there's been relief. There's, there's been relief uh, group, groups. Who have been um, slaughtered blown up hundreds at yeah. a time? I mean, yeah. so there's a lot wrong, but it's war. There's no war where that won't happen. There's not a war well, where that will know, not happen. You know, I I question that statement. I think crap happens. We're gonna go to commercial okay. whether we like it or not. But okay, crap happens. But how many times in such a short period of time does crap happen? We get millions of people in a consolidated area. It's not good. It's not. We're going to return in just a moment. Also, want to pick Brian's brain about what uh, his views are on the NFL draft, which is still taking place, but some big moves in the NFL over the last couple of days. Obviously, you're listening to Ken Pippen on AM 1420 WBSM. All right, we're back. Uh, so let's just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to this. Um, conversation on the trouble uh, on the co- college campuses across the country. Um, but I, last night and the night before, the NFL and their annual draft, uh, that these moves take, took place in Detroit. Uh, man. Men's night. 200, yeah, <laughs> 270,000 people. Did you see that? That was unbelievable. They, at first, they were saying 150,000, and I thought that was pretty massive. But 270. Yeah. Damn. Well, wow. does Boston even have a place that can handle that? Probably the Commons. Yeah, I guess you'd have to go there. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think the people on Beacon Hill would be supportive of it. I do. You you throw money their way. They've got the bars and stuff like that. The old Cheers and yeah. and whatnot. I don't think the old Cheers is going to hold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Em- Emerson's right around the corner. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, yeah. Right. Is, is there enough room between the protesters and the and the supporters of the NFL? Uh, it's just not a lot of areas that I can think of. But you're right. Maybe the Esplanade or something like that. Um, but um, two hundred seventy five thousand, uh, pretty much nerds, right? Football nerds just go to the draft, and, and I'm, I'm sorry. I might go to, like, Miami for something like that. I'm what? not going to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, no, I'm not, I'm not, not going to go to Cleveland. Either. Right? I'm not going to I'm just not going to do something like that. Well, wait a minute. Didn't they have it in Cleveland a couple of years ago? Probably. And they had the um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was right there. It's it's a... I mean, one thing about Goodell is he he is a marketer, right? He knows how to do market the NFL. I mean, now they're playing in South America this year. They're playing Two in things. Europe. Huh? Two things about him. He can take a boo. Yeah, he brushes those right boot. off. Yeah, yeah, I know that's true, um, but he he knows how to market the NFL, and it, and the money's coming in like nobody's business. They used to do the draft at Radio City Music Hall in New every York every year, year yeah. where what six thousand maybe could watch from the from the stands, whatever that whatever yeah. the capacity is there it might not even be that much, uh, and nobody better than I. It was just something you got accustomed to now. This is rock star status, and uh, they make the big production, and they get cameras across the country, and all these kids' living rooms, and three nights. Three, there's three nights of this, yeah. Three days. Yeah. Um, and, and so the first night on Thursday, annually, is is reserved just for the first round. Then they cut it, and then the second day is for second and third round, and then they finish the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds on on um, Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. And today, no, today t- Saturday. Yeah. So okay, so today yeah, I was right. Uh, said today's the third day. And it's very exciting for NFL fans. They want to see what their teams are doing. This is the first time this century that Bill Belichick 
um, my new best friend, um, <laughs> is not involved with the New England Patriots decision making. So we don't know really what the brain trust is, uh, if they're good or bad. We got a little indication now. Uh, I'm only saying that because, you know, I was away. My band was performing down in oh, Florida last okay. week. And who do I see in the airport right across from me? It was Mr. Bill Belichick on his. Really? He was in a Zoom meeting. He was. Yeah. I thought he was off the phone. I thought he was off and because there was no activity. I took a step toward him and his eyes got as big as eggs. And I said, you know, on the phone still? And he nodded. I said, I just want to say thanks for everything, coach. And he, and he, go, and he said, yeah. And he, like, get out of here. I'm, I got to talk. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, t- I'm talking about my Nantucket property. I should have I should have ran by him as fast as I could with a stop sign. Four eight. Four nine. What do you think, coach? Do I got it? I just maybe get it down to four or five. Probably that's not gonna happen. Um <laughs> but anyway, um he was just in by himself in in uh, I think he had a, one of those vests on, like a, a ski park of vest, a, a college shirt, shorts and sneakers. And where was this? Logan Airport. He was probably going to Florida, Ken. I don't know. He didn't catch my flight. We were going to Florida. He didn't. Uh, but uh, anyway, but so he ended up doing this analysis. And I'm thinking, why would Bill Belichick do an analysis? Ah, maybe he wants Patriot Nation to know what he would have done as opposed to what's being done. Now, he did not like the Drake May pick, really. Um, well, okay. He, I, 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 can I raise my hand? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. It wasn't impressed. I already can see the headlines. If this kid stinks, let's say we're 2-11 and, and, he, and he steps in the field when they're like... Uh, you know, zero and four, zero and five, and he steps in the field in the two and eleven, and he's making mistake after mistake. May Day, yeah, good with an E, yeah. with an E. Yeah. I can I, right. I should patent that. Oh, um, but you know what? You could also have May Day if he does well. well. I'm a little concerned about this. We have May Day. We have Kraft Mayo. We have Coach Mayo. Oh, we have Drake man. May. You've been thinking about this too much. Oh, Mother geez. May I? You've been yeah. thinking about this too much, Ken. Yeah, maybe. Mother, a little too much thought. Mother, Mother I, Day I May. Think, I think, I hope I'm wrong. Drake May, I hope he's everything they think he's going to be, the next Herbert or Josh Allen, whatever. Um, but he does tend to bail out of the pocket and, and take off without letting the plays progress uh, a little too often. Uh, he took 22 sacks. Uh, he had, if what you kind do, of a, what kind of a line did he have? No, it wasn't the best team. Yeah, I, I, I get that, but he was not putting up um, numbers that make you feel comfortable that this is a franchise quarterback. Hello. Although he I, did, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm saying hello because Hi. you've got the number three pick, mm-hmm. and that's the best you did. With your number three, you pick. get the third best quarterback in the draft. I don't. So why are you saying he's the third best? Even you, even Perceived. by your standards, the, by by the by, by the, your standards, by Penix the the collective was scouting. Yeah, and um, Bo Nix was better. Well, you know, Penix, Bo Nix was better. Penix, Thank you. Let me. Penix looks great. Check the Carfax. He had four surgeries already. And what is Atlanta doing? They just paid Kirk Cousins. Oh 100- no, I, no, no! I see. I get. I get what Atlanta's they doing. They just paid Kirk Cousins yes. one hundred and eighty million dollars to be the quarterback for the next yeah. four years, and then with the eighth pick in the first round, they grab a quarterback who's already had four surgeries on his shoulders and knees. Yeah, I get it. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, because what, what, they figure they're going to get it. two, maybe three years out of Kirk Cousins, but and that will, will be that removed from his injuries. This guy. Time to groom. This is this is Minnesota. That's how it was done. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, back. Uh, uh, Steve Young. Uh, obviously, um, he had years uh, perfect, uh, in, perfect the, example. in the pros before. Aaron Rodgers sat but, behind yeah. Brett Favre. Yeah, Love sat behind Rodgers for it's, years. I mean, it's, it's how it usually is done mm-hmm. today. It used to be done anyway. Well, because now we have this five-year period where we can take advantage of the the rookie salary cap and get the most we can. Let's get these guys in the field sooner than later. And you're ruining people. Look at Mac Jones. Mac Jones probably well. Not the best example because I think Mac Jones. Oh, I think he is. He's exactly what you're saying. But Mac Jones, I mean, softball umpires would call illegal arc on some of his <laughs> bullet passes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, he doesn't have the arm strength. I mean, Drake May, one thing I'll say about Drake May, I saw a video of him. I, I just said this off here. In the video, he's on the 22 yard line facing the other side of the field and he's aiming for the goal post, which is obviously 10 yards deep in the end zone. So that's 88 yards. His first try, he threw the football, he and he hit he hit this thing 88 yards away. Did he hit it in the middle? I, I couldn't. Did he hit I couldn't it to tell you. To the right? I couldn't tell you. See, that's what matters. But but my word, they made a big thing about um, Joe Milton. Is that his name? 
Joe, right? The uh, quarterback from Tennessee? Yeah. He threw the ball 70 yards during the combine. Everybody was like, oh, boy, he could throw it 70 yards. I've thrown the ball 70 yards, and I'm a terrible quarterback. What does that, I mean, that got to do with anything? But 88 yards, that's a different animal. That's, my 88 God. yards is a lot, but, you know, that's you, know, you know this as well as I do. It is the accuracy. Right. That counts. Well, and it's what's happening upstairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> right? Because you got to not only be able to throw in, in small windows, you got to be able to do it when you see it happen or when you see it about or to happen. before it happens. Yeah, you have to throw it yeah. ahead of the, I mean, there's a lot to be in a quarter. It's not. It's one of the hardest positions in all of sports. Um, I think maybe the hardest position in all of sports might have been when you were opposite Mike Tyson uh, in, in that window of time where he was indestructible. <laughs> but I wouldn't want that position uh, in 1994 or whatever. But um, I don't know that oh, I'm going to go down that road. The, so... Question then. Yeah. Quarterback or hockey goaltender? I think quarterback is really. Good. Yeah, I do. Oof. No. If you well if, I'm not saying that's easy, the the goaltending. I I understand. Uh, what about a, a soccer goalie? No. I don't you know, bigger bigger range, but I don't know, you're on ice in hockey. I don't know what to expect with this with this. Press, you know, I'm, 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 are we going to draft a, a, a punt advisor? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. But Drake May, to them, was the safe choice. In my mind, you get a better team if you slide down, let Minnesota take Drake May. Now you've got three first-round choices, two this year, one next year, and now you get draft capital to, to maybe get a couple more uh, pieces of this puzzle. You really, this is not an easy fix. This is a three-year fix minimum, right? Uh, Drake May, may may solve all your problems. I see... A lot of signs that he's not ready, and he could be something, but he's not something yet. Well, that's what Jacoby Brissett is all about. He's the bridge. Yeah, and, and he's built to be that bridge because somebody's getting clobbered the first 10 games. <laughs> somebody's going to be... Well, you know, <laughs> good offensive lineman that they chose. Uh, I, I thought, you know, that they should have taken BB at Kansas State, and yeah. he was left on the... He was left... They left him there, and who took him the next pick? Dallas. I, I don't know. I, I don't know much about that guy. I know Ole Fashano, his teammate... I wanted him in, a, in the big way, the uh, the offensive tackle. But yeah. this is an interior lineman, a tough guy, works hard. Uh, not, I don't know as much about him Bully. as I knew about so many of these guys. But um, you know, the Patriots in Dallas, I think to their shock, saw this run on tackles in the first round that they didn't think was going to happen, and so they left out in, in the dark. Um, and Dallas dropped down, thinking they were going to get Morgan from uh, Arizona, the good offensive tackle, and, and only to watch Green Bay snag him. So the best laid plans of mice and men in the NFL, I guess. Um, but then the second round, the Pats grab uh, Jalen Polk, six foot two wide receiver out of Washington, the, the runner up for the national championship, who caught passes for Penix, and uh, oftentimes overlooked by Odunz. Um, I, I had a couple of players I, I would have liked to have seen on the team before him, but I don't think it's a bad pick. Well, so in other words. The it, it's, it's why don't we choose Randy Vataha again? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, Randy Vataha. Yeah, um, Ricky Pearsall going in the first round. I thought that was a reach. I think he's a good player. Yeah. Oh, they're all good players. Yeah, they're all great players. But San Francisco, but, pros? but San Francisco has got Ayuk. They've got Debo Samuels. They, you see, you had to figure they're going to move something here because well, didn't they, I? I thought I round. heard that uh, Debo is getting moved and Buffalo. And the Patriots are high in the running. That's what I heard on, um, I did on the hear radio that. yesterday. I, I did hear that. Um, and it didn't happen. It doesn't mean it won't happen still, but that, that definitely was discussed because all the legit you know, news organizations that cover all this stuff were reporting on it. So I, I imagine before it's all said and done, Debo, with his salary, um, I, I, would, I would think maybe he's going to go. Uh, the, the Jets... It's a weird thing. We can say that Detroit and the Jets have good teams. <laughs> it's a f- no, I never thought I'd be able to say that in the same sentence. No, uh, are, we, are we saying the Jets because Aaron Rodgers Jets, is Jets coming have, back? They've had a very good draft. Aaron Rodgers. They uh, had a good draft the year before. Too. They have. And the no, year before they, that. The front office. Man, they, yeah, but they I, still, I hate to say they, got, they, they still a, have to put it together. They, they, they do. I mean, well, barring injury. Compared to the uh, Patriots. Barring yeah. injury, barring you know crazy decisions by coaches that, that blow a game. Because I like this coach, Sayla. I think he's good. Um, I think they've got a good, the, the right front office. Coach, uh, they have a good team on paper. I, they have I, a good, I'll they tell have you this. a good nucleus. I think the Jets won the AFC East this year on paper. Well, okay, but I w- I'd rather see who wins it on the field. I know. you got to see them play it up. Uh, I think Buffalo's window is closing. I really do. They picked Keon 
Coleman from Florida State, um, when they dropped down after needing him, they gave Kansas City basically the next Tyreek Hill back. When they dropped down, they flopped. They flopped the. the they swapped with um, Kansas City, who gets Xavier Worthy, who scored the fastest forty-yard dash in combine history. Yeah, I, they get the next <laughs> Tyreek Hill, so the rich get richer. Uh, so I, yeah, I, it, but he's built like Rover from Sesame Street. <laughs> Hello, I, everybody. I, I, I can see. He's got the shoulder with him. I can see why <laughs> Buffalo didn't choose that guy. Kansas City, you're absolutely right. The difference between Kansas City and Buffalo is it gets colder a lot quicker up in Buffalo, and that kind of speed doesn't matter as much. Kansas City's cold. Oh, no, I know, but not as soon. You know, so, in other words... They had frostbite. They, it, uh, but they, they won't in November and at the beginning oh. of December. Okay. That's what I'm getting at. All right. Well, the lake snow certainly yeah. Uh, yeah. is a factor. Yeah. Um, Blow a guy like that backwards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So you see Thornton, you know, the, the, the real skinny oh, guy. Oh, real? Have you seen him in the gym? No. What's oh, he look my like? God. He, he's got something on he's, him now? Well, he's put on a good 18 pounds of beef. Pretzel? Oh, no, no. He's been pounding the weights, oh, pounding good. the carbs. Uh, Kendrick Bourne and him are working out six times a week. He's, he's buff. I mean, good. we're not going to recognize this guy. Nope. Uh, he looks great. Hopefully, hopefully he makes the team. Oh, it's going to be crowded, isn't it? Yeah, oh, you already have six receivers. Yeah, you Ten? got six. You got six receivers that are under contract, Ken. Yeah. 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 Now, Boutte, I don't know how long, much longer that's going to be. That, wouldn't, that might not age well. He got caught gambling on his own team down at LSU. I mean, oof. That's see. I think this to me. If if you gamble on your own team and you gamble against your team, that's a deeper infraction in my mind than gambling for your team. I, I don't think you should be allowed to do either. I think they should both be banned or, and maybe criminalized like they are now, but I think it's a worse infraction if you're gambling against your team. Yeah. Right? Because you can do things... Exactly. Um, yeah, and so that, but but he was gambling, uh, apparently, on his team. So, and that's a, that's a no-no. He got busted. Well, allegedly. Allegedly. We don't... He has not convicted yet, but he's in big trouble. I think the patch will probably announce he's going to be released. Oh, I'm sure... Think, I'm think, sure the league will take care of that, too. Yeah, they may not... Let, right. They yeah. may bounce him anyway. I think so. Juju is going to be gone pretty soon, Ken. Yeah, but he's going to get a great gum endorsement. No, it's a joke. I, I, he's not. I, you, you had, he, he he is not very impressive. He had a great Super yeah, Bowl. You know what? It, it's it's hard to. He had Mac Jones and then um, the, 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 the Bailey Zappi after that. It's hard. I mean, he he was good when he was with Kansas City and halfway decent when he was with Pittsburgh. Bailey Zappi's getting the fly swatter endorsement, by the way. Um, I think I think I think you're right, but he still. There was there was problems with him, um, like what? Well, they were saying he wasn't a, he very lazy in practice. He wasn't like doing what I'd he needed to do. I'd be lazy on that team too. Bad attitude. Yeah, yeah I would be lazy on that team too. Oh, okay. you, you, you could see the writing on the wall. I mean, Douglas wasn't. He tried every play. Well, keep him. He's a player. Yeah, right. But they have all of a sudden a crowded field at wide receiver, which that's a, that's a nice problem to have, I guess. Getting Osborne over from uh, Minnesota. Ozzie? Yeah. Um, so. But then the Patriots grab uh, an offensive interior lineman because there really weren't any quality tackles left, which is a big problem for them, I think. All the time. Mm. And so you, you asked about Drake May. It, my, my, my opinion, all three of those picks just give me a big question mark. They didn't get the, maybe, like I said, it, it might be me. They didn't get the quarterback that, they could have done better with. They didn't get the offensive lineman that they could have done better with. And they didn't get the wide receiver that they could have done better with. Yeah, I think it was Lad McConkey was still on board. I I think I, at the end of the day, Lad McConkey probably doesn't get open as easy in the NFL as maybe Jalen Polk. I mean, he's, hmm. he's but he you know they're, they're saying he was he's going to be a really good one. I don't know. I don't know how they how they read it. Kendrick, I mean Keon Coleman. Uh, ran a four six, forty. I, I know he's six four or whatever. I don't four six. It's gonna be hard for him to get open with that speed. Um, yeah, but Buff, Buffalo lost two two of their wide receivers. Though, okay. No, they had to do something. But why would they drop down and drop out of getting uh, Leggett from South Carolina or Xavier Worthy? I, that didn't make any sense to me. Ken, you know why? You know why Kansas City took Worthy, right? Yeah, because he was available. No, there's some uh, legal issues with uh, Rashad Rice. 
Well, with all his legal issues right now, I, I understand. But they need an alpha wide receiver. They, they they didn't have one last year. They got away with it, won a Super Bowl. But they didn't have a true number one. Now they have they have Rice. <sighs> no, he's showing signs. I know he's showing signs that he could be something else. But you really need a bona fide number one on a team that's going to be contending against. I mean, because AFC is loaded for bears. Uh, Cincinnati, I think, has done well. Minnesota's had a good draft. Um, I think uh, Joe Alt's going to San Diego. Herbert is going to have a big year, if you ask me. I don't know who he's going to throw to, uh, but he's going to have a big year. I think he's just didn't, one of those quarterbacks. Didn't, didn't uh, the Chargers get the the running back from Michigan, too? Yeah. Um, Blake Corm. Blake Corm, which is a great, that's a great um, running back right there. I'm I'm hoping the Pats grab Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. Um you know, kind of like Stevenson, but bigger. He's 6'2", 240, runs a 4'4", catches well, blocks well. Um, I, I think he's going to be a beast in the league. And so if you have Stevenson and Braylon Allen on that team, that's that's going to so help. So you, you bring that up, and I don't know the answer to this question. Is Ezekiel Elliott still around? Is he, he's expected to sign with the, the Cowboys, but no, he, they haven't signed him no, yet. No, right? they haven't signed him yet, no. Because Tony Pollard has gone from... The Cowboys. I didn't like the move. Patriots bringing um, Elliot here. He changed my mind. Yeah, he did well yeah. for us. Guy I worked hard. I think, put he his wanted, nose down. I think he wanted a contract. I I ended up liking this kid. Yeah, you know, I, I, and I remember I did like him in college, but then when he was on Dallas with his, you know, they, they're losing by 18 points, and he's scooping up this, you know, keep feeding me. I'm getting the yardage. I hated that arrogance. Mm. Look at the scoreboard clown. Right? I, I, for years, I built up this animosity against him because I hated that. And then but he comes to New England. He comes to New England. You know him a little more intimately. He's a pretty good guy. He did the same thing here, though, as far as the spoon. When, um, he, when he had the opportunity. Maybe he had one opportunity. <laughs> 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 he got a yard. No, he worked hard. He really did and, and made, the, made the, uh, the running game with Stevenson. I mean, it, it well, was... Stevenson ended up missing, what, the last... Right, five or six games. Yeah, he kept a running game somewhat yeah. credible for the for New England. I'll, I'll give him that. There's no no doubt about it. Um, but it, it it is at the end of the day one of the worst rosters we've seen in, in 35 years. Right I mean, for them, yeah. So so rebuilding starts today. We'll see if Drake May is who they say. They, I believe me, I'm for it. I'm I'm, I'm I'm now in his camp. I hope he is. It's kind of I look at him kind of like we talked about, like I do when I. See the pilot get in the cockpit and the plane. I didn't pick him, but I hope he does a good job, right? Uh, that's how I'm looking at it. Uh, and it is an interesting thing. Miami. Me. The guy I, you know, my guy was Bo Nix from Oregon. Yep. Which is why I felt it was safe to slide down, get a tackle, get a wide receiver, and then grab Bo Nix. Turns out it wasn't so smart because look what Sean Payton did. I mean, people think that's a reach. I, I got to tell you, that's the guy you want him going to. Bo Nix is kind of like a Drew Brees in my mind, and Sean Payton saw it, and now he gets to work with this kid. I think a lot of teams are going to re- re- really regret passing by Bo Nix. Ken, uh, who's, who's the week one starter in Denver? It's not Bo Nix. No, I think Minch, uh, Minch, um, it's Gardner it's, Minshew? No, it's going to no. be. It's gonna Minshew's be, in no, no, no. Uh, be, uh, Vegas. The guy that they just got from the Jets, Zach Wilson. No, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't say that's or true. Stat, or Statham. Zach Wilson is is the the singing frog. He hasn't performed as much as we have heard. He's going to be a great performer. He has not performed. I wouldn't say that's locked. Um, because because you, you either got to go with Zach Wilson week one or Jared Stidham. Ken Houston's going to be a force. Yes, they are. They are going to be nasty. Chicago's going to be good. Yeah, look look who Caleb Williams has to throw to. I mean, Keenan Allen. Uh, they, they. Keenan Allen, DJ, DJ Moore, Moore, DJ Moore, the wide receiver that they drafted. Marvin. No, no, he went to Arizona, right? The uh, neighbors. No, the the guy from uh, Malik Neighbors. No, no, the guy from Washington. Oh, oh, Duns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Neighbors went they, to. Um, where did he go? He's great too, by the way. Another one from oh, man, LSU. I'm trying to think where he went. LSU is just a wide receiver factory. Ken, you know what's funny? They, they, they oh, Duns. So you got a Duns, DJ Moore. They said it on Thursday. He, what? He, oh, Duns and Caleb Williams flew in together. Yes, to the they draft. did. Yep. Wow. They and did. That, and now they, 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 were throw, they were throwing with each other, just throwing um, down in L.A. And because they were both down in L.A., they flew into Detroit, Detroit on the on the same plane. So, so I like Caleb Williams. I think it's possible he could be another... Lamar, another Mahomes. I don't know, 
But I also know he took 33 sacks this year. And he threw Bo, Bo Nix. Here's the other thing. Bo Nix, 470 passes, five sacks. Caleb Williams, 327 passes. 33, 33 sacks. 33, no, wait a minute. The, 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 327 was uh, Daniels. But he took like 100 fewer passes than Daniels. Than, uh, oh, uh, Bo, Bo Nix. And he, 33 sacks. Uh, Drake May took 29 sacks. If colleges are frustrating them that much, where he's holding onto the ball 29 times too long. What are the what are the pro defenses going to do to him? Um, and Belichick's again. Belichick said he's going to have to learn to read defenses better. Um, he's going to have to learn how to throw into tighter windows. It's the NFL. Nobody's really wide open in the NFL, and he's going to have to let plays develop longer before he takes off like he does. Uh, so he's got a lot. Of, he's got to change a lot of his instincts, which is a big problem for me. Um, really, if if you watch Belichick's analysis. He, the only ones who he felt were ready to maybe step on the field day one were Caleb Williams and Bo Nix. And the others are going to be works in progress. I mean, and it's okay because Drake May is only 21. I mean, he'll be 22 by, by the season's opener. But McCarthy's a young kid. Um, Penix is not. Penix is no hurry to get Penix on the field. So, you know, some of these teams, it's a, they're in a good position to let these guys groom. Um, but Drake May, I think a lot of pressure is going to be on him to get on that field week six, week eight, whatever it's going to be. Because Jacoby Brissett is a good quarterback. He's not a great quarterback, but he can keep you in games. He, he might be able to win a couple of games they shouldn't have won because he's pretty good with the ball. He's pretty careful, and he's a competitor, and he's tough. I mean, he's, he's built to be that bridge quarterback because somebody's going to get their butt handed to him uh, the first few weeks here. And uh, I'm glad he's back because I, I, I really thought he was a yeah, good pick. Yeah, he never should have left. No, he was a good yeah. patriot. He was a, he was a safe backup. He, I, I was happy for him that he got a, a chance to start. Right, he, he went everywhere he went. He played pretty good, right? Um, Washington, yeah, Indian, his, Indianapolis. His one start in in New England was a victory, if I recall. Yeah, when Garoppolo wouldn't play because his, his hand hurt. Yeah, right. Well, he would, well, for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah he went. You know, he went he, to he Washington. He took it. He took advantage of the opportunity. He, did he, he go to Washington he, or did he go Garoppolo, to Indianapolis? Garoppolo would limp if his feelings were hurt. I mean, he's. I just. Where is he now? Uh, on the outside looking in, right? No, he's he's the backup to Stafford in uh, L.A. Rams. Oh, is that where he went? Yeah. Jimmy Grapes. Not far from Wineland. Um, L.A., to, to tell you, that's, watch out for the Rams. Yeah. Well, Why? Can, can, no Donaldson? They've they done a nice job. Aaron Donald's not there no more, though. Huh? Aaron Donald. Donald. Donald's You're tired. I know, but they, they got, um, what's his name? Um, they got a good pass rusher, an edge rusher from, uh, I think Penn State, was it? Um, In the draft. Rob, Ro- Trap Robinson, is that, who they, is that where he went? Or, did, or was that Seattle? I think Chop Robinson no, went there. They did, they did get somebody in the first round, and I forgot the person's name. And he is outside, and the the, the comparison was he's not going to be Donald, but uh, oh, Donald's he, he, one of the top ten ever. Yeah. Right? I think he's probably a Hall of Famer. Oh yeah, I would think yeah. so. I mean, you had to put two on that guy, and even then, it wasn't enough. Um, yeah, there's no reason to say he's going to be that guy, but um, they addressed it at least right away. Um, in the first round, who did they get? So the Rams got uh, da, 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 Blake Corum in the first. second round, right? Yeah, Blake Corum was, went, went to, to the Rams. Went to the Rams, not the Chargers. Sorry. Yeah, Blake, was, he went to the Rams. In the first round, though, they they, they did. They addressed that problem with, with uh, Donald uh, retiring. And they grabbed... No, they didn't have a pick in the first in the first one. They, they had to do that in the second one. It was their first pick, though. Um, but Matthew Stafford, he's a winner. Um, they grabbed he Braden, won one. No, they got they got a great <laughs> defensive lineman, Braden Fisk from Florida State, who I wanted the Pats to get. Wasn't really interior lineman, not really high on the list of needs, but kind of like you know when when we got Vince Wilfork, uh, he was just too good not to take. He's one of those guys, and uh, they somehow got him with the um, 39th pick. And Braden Fisk was supposed to go in the top you know, 22 or 24 at one point. Well, look how many offensive players went in the first dozen. Amazing. I mean, and we knew it was going to be one of the better drafts in many, many years for offensive players, quarterbacks, wide receivers. Uh, we knew that was going to be the case. But, man, what was it nine players before a defensive play was taken? Twelve. Twelve? Twelve. Wow. Ken, but if, but if you look at New England, they could have got that guy poke at 34. They traded down to get him. He's the, there was still a couple of guys I'd rather see. I would have rather I would have wanted to see um well I guess 
Bo Nix. Well, uh, no, he went 12 in the first round. But uh, Adonai Mitchell. He was, he was there at three. Adonai Mitchell from Texas. All the physical gifts, 11 touchdowns, 1,100 yards. But he's also, there must have been some sort of background check you, on him. Who do you go to? Uh, went to somebody. In- he was, a, he was a, a Georgia trans. I think he was a Georgia transplant who went to um, Texas. Yeah, he, he, he went to somebody yesterday. In like the second, oh, yeah. second or third round. Yeah, he was picked. And he wasn't happy, but he looked like he was upset that it took took him that long to see the brilliance in him. But I think there's something to that. I think a lot of teams learned something about his background because he should have been gone long ago. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back and uh, boy, fast hour moved really uh, faster than I imagined. And um, coming up to the news break right after we return, don't go away. All right, we're going to cut it short in just a few minutes, but uh, in the next hour, we're going to have John Sapachetti, formerly from the Boston Herald, uh, talking about this draft. And uh, um, obviously, uh, so much going on between the the, uh, the anti-war or anti, really anti-Jew movement that's happening. It's an ugly movement. And one thing I can say is I am very happy, in retrospect, that the colleges um, pretty much banned conservative professors from their campuses. There's no conservative right-wing DNA in any of this massive hatred that suddenly surfaced. Uh, this is all from, from the left, and they don't know what to do with it. And uh, thank I mean, there's, because they, these geometrists in the media would find an angle to point to the right here. This, it can't be found. This is not a right, right-wing movement. This is hatred coming from the, quote, tolerant, unquote, um, and it, they just don't know how to write about it. They don't know how to deal with it. it it's um, it's an amazing thing. Joe Biden doesn't know what to do. But Joe Biden, like many things, he's feckless. And, um, you know, Ryan, it's a pretty sad day when people agree with the president that the economy is good. Um, when your hamburger got a higher raise than you, 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 you know, you should admit there's a problem. And so many people say, oh, what are you talking about? Things are great. Uh, yeah, sure, I've had to downsize. Bidenomics. It's going in the right direction, though. I've been told. Um, my brother has gone to the dark side. He's now, well, he's in the union. He's in the union, uh, so he's, but he's now doing all of Biden's bidding. Talking about how Trump's tax breaks benefited the corporations. Nobody benefited more, according to the IRS data, than the working class from Trump's tax breaks. Nobody. So I had to educate him a little bit. Uh, but there's more work to be done on that end. I'll keep you informed. It's awful. This was, this was a guy who used to hold a sign for George Bush Sr. I mean, he's a, uh, Ronald Reagan. Did you see, did you see the, um, yeah. the union workers in New York yesterday? Oh, chairing for, for Trump. Yeah. Well, but let me tell you something. The skilled laborers, the, the, the iron workers, the plumbers, the electricians, the carpenters, those, those union guys, those aren't liberals. Those are conservative patriots, former veterans. The... The, the problem is that collectively the unions, teamsters are, run, are led around by the, by the nose by the people with the numbers, the SEIU, the unskilled laborers that work in the, uh, or lower skilled, I think, so we don't offend anybody. But the, the, the hotel workers, that kind of thing, they're the ones with all the numbers. So that's, they, they, they kind of crush the will of the, the skilled laborers who don't necessarily agree with anything uh, other than they understand uh, in Boston you know, the Democrats have been pretty good to the unions, um, maybe a little too good in some cases, in my opinion. But they, you know, all politics is local. I think they're forced to stay on the Democratic Party. I've said for years, and if, if you listen to my show long enough, you know I've said it, the Republicans have got to do more to make inroads with with the, uh, the union. with, with unions. Yeah. Yes. This is, this is, these are good Americans who, um, you know, have been really, I think, dismissed by too many Republicans. It's time to change that. Uh, it, it's sink or swim time, and a lot of people got to recognize that we need these these good Americans on on our side. All right, we're going to break. We'll be back. You're listening to Ken Pittman on WBSM. WBSM and W258DR, New Bedford. 
a Town Square Media Station.